Good afternoon, viewers. In today's class, we'll be doing the anti Markovnikov's rule and its mechanism. The word anti Markovnikov means it is opposite of Markovnikov's rule. In an anti Markovnikov's rule, you again take an unsymmetrical alkene. The word unsymmetrical means the double bonded carbons should have different number of hydrogens. This has got two hydrogens directly attached to it. This has got just one hydrogen directly attached to it. Adding on an identity. Now this time you cannot write an HX. You will have to write an HBr because this rule is only applicable to HBr. On top of it, you need to mention organic peroxide in here which is the reason why this reaction goes an anti of way. It is only applicable to HBr, mind you. The negative identity therefore becomes a Br. The negative identity this time would go to the double bonded carbon having more number of hydrogens. Hence, your Br will have to move to the terminal CH2. Hence, you have a Br here. This is your final product when you talk about an anti of rule. This is 1-bromo propane. Had it been a Markovnikov rule, that is you would not have written organic peroxide. In that case, the negative identity would have gone to the double bonded carbon having lesser number of hydrogens directly attached to it. Hence, in that case, it would have moved on to the central carbon and the product would not have been a 2-bromo. In this case, your Br would have gone to the second carbon and it would have been a 2-bromo. Now, since we are doing an anti Markovnikov rule, the negative part which is Br only, this Br minus goes to the double bonded carbon having more number of hydrogens. Moving on to the mechanism, organic peroxide commonly used is benzoyl peroxide. This is the benzoyl part and this is the peroxide part which is the weak part. This peroxide easily cleaves according to homolytic cleavage leading to C6H5CO the bond broken here and you generate a free radical. You will actually generate two such molecules. This identity further cleaves in a way that you end up in the release of a carbon dioxide molecule. This bond cleaves here again homolytically and you end up in a CO2 liberated this part and you are left with a C6H5 free radical the phenyl free radical. This phenyl free radical in the step 2 combines with HBr and leads to a free radical will only lead to a homolytic cleavage, one electron each. The phenyl takes away the H, hence you end up in a C6H6 benzene free and you are left with a bromine free radical is the requirement for anti Markovnikov rule. Now this particular is not applicable to HCl because the bond dissociation energy is very high so this doesn't happen. Now what, have, what about HI then? The bond is very weak. Hence it does easily give you an I free radical. But these are so reactive that they quickly combine with another I negative to form I2. Hence the reason behind anti Markovnikov's rule being applicable only to HBr is its bond dissociation energy which is neither too high nor too low. Had it been high the bond doesn't cleave and had it been low it leads to another byproduct and not the iodide free radical that we require for the reaction. Moving on to the step 3 where you are going to use the bromide free radical. anti Markovnikov's rule is a free radical addition across an unsymmetrical alkene. This bromide now has to attack onto your alkene. The alkene that we were using was CH3, CH, double bond, a CH2. This particular bond, if this has to combine with a Br free radical, you need to cleave this bond homolytically. The options are the root A, bromide ion goes here. This I make it as root A. So let us finish this part first. Had the mechanism proceeded by root A, then your CH3 is here. CH has a free radical. The free radical on CH2 is satisfied by the Br. 
you end up with this. Now, had it been that your bromide would have gone to this carbon, that becomes your B root. Taking to the B root, in this case, you have a CH3 unaffected. The free radical formed here is taken up by the bromide to form a bond. Your bond cleaves, while your CH2, you are left with the free radical. Out of these two, this particular one is a 2 degree free radical, while this is a 1 degree free radical. And we very well know this is the reaction which will continue because 2 degree free radical is more stable. Reason being, these two methyl groups stabilize the 2 degree free radical, while this is a stable free radical and this is an unstable free radical. This route we will not follow and this is the route we are going to follow. Moving ahead to the step 4. The end product of step 3 was this. Which will now combine with the H dot left from here. In this case we had an HBr formed, Br dot formed, another molecule of an HBr can lead to the formation of an H dot. This H dot, the free radical, is coming from another molecule of HBr which is undergoing homolytic cleavage. This hydrogen free radical now moves on to the free radical or the second carbon leading to CH3, CH2, CH2 and a Br. So your final product is one bromopropane as was predicted in the beginning. But mind you, this reaction has a free radical orientation. So, it is only specifically for HBr. Anti-Markonikov's rule is only applicable to HBr when it adds on to an unsymmetrical alkene. The mechanism was as done by us. Points to remember would be why not for HCl? Why not for HI? And why does this bromide ion only attack the A root? The reason is formation of a 2 degree free radical, which is the cause of the reaction movement. 1 degree free radical is comparatively unstable. Thank you.